Welcome to GDP Network Learning Byte. My name is Mara Finus. I'm a lab architect within education services in Sir Juniper. In this learning byte, I'll be showing you how to deploy a virtual router reflector on a CentOS KVM instance using Virtual Machine Manager. So before I um, show you how to deploy it, let's talk about virtual router reflector. So basically, uh, VRR, it allows administrators to implement a route reflector capability using a general purpose virtual machine that can be run on a regular 64-bit Intel-based server or appliance. It works the same as a route reflector on a router, for example, a physical MX router, right? But it provides a scalable alternative to full mesh internal BGP pairing uh, functionality. VRR works in the control plane, basically. It is qualified primarily as a route reflector with minimal data plane support. If you need packet forwarding, MPL or VPN, or uh, class of service feature support, you might consider using a VMX instead. Okay. Lastly, it can be implemented at multiple locations in the network. It helps to scale the PGP network, lower cost by virtualizing. So basically, you can uh, deploy VR VMs across your data center rather than buying physical equipments all over the place. Okay, so this is a basic hard requirement for VRR. So as you see, 8 gigabyte memory is the default setting. You should start with 8 gigabyte, and you can go up 32 gigabyte if it's a higher scale deployment. It supports both local NAS storage, and Intel's Xeon Alum or newer generation processors are recommended. And then this, this slide basically shows you the basic uh, uh, software requirements for VRR 19.4 R1, which is what I'm going to be showing you at this point because that's the latest available for me to download. But as you can see, it's in its support Ubuntu, CentOS, and Reddit Linux. Make sure you meet that requirement. VR interfaces. So basically, when you deploy VRR, you probably should consider deploying with at least two interfaces. One will be the EM0, which basically will serve the need to connect the out-of-band management network. So almost similar like an FXP0 interface on some of the platforms, right? And then this is where you can SSH the VR instance and do your CLI stuff. And the, the second interface, you can have like a data interface, which is basically EM1, and it terminates all the routing traffic and it's connected to the data network. And you can always add more virtual NICs into the VRR if you need so. With this further ado, let's uh, go to the deployment. So I'm going to connect to my Linux KVM box here, which has the VRR bundle, KVM bundle downloaded from the Juniper website. I'm going to extract it by right clicking it. You can also use CLI if you want. Let's check out the Linux CLI documentation, how to extract it. Close. I have it downloaded. So basically, this uh, package uh, supports both KVM and the OpenStack. And there's a README file, which basically explains the uh, images that are part of the VR. There is a Junos uh, image and also a metadata. So we're going to first, so what you can do, you can either use the same directory if it's just for testing, or but if you're in a production environment, you probably want to save these images to a NAS location and then map to Virtual Machine Manager through that location, okay? But for this demonstration, I'm just going to rename this and say, okay, this is the my VRR1 NOS. Metadata, I'm going to call it. You can keep, I could still keep the same name if I wanted to give the VM name. And I'm going to just map. Actually, I'm going to copy these two files. I'm going to go to my home directory. And I'm going to create a uh, new directory, vr1. My home directory, I'm going to paste those two files. OK. And here, I'm going to go to my so virtual machine manager. I have it in a CentOS. You know, in the virtual machine manager, you can install it with the installation or check the CentOS documentation. So I'm going to add, go to edit first, go to connection details. And first, I'm going to store it, then click on Add. So I'm going to add that storage location. I'm going to call it VRR1. And it's file system directory in my local KVM box. So I'm going to click on Forward. And then I'm going to, by default, it goes there. I could create a folder there and save it. But 
I'm just gonna browse to the directory that I just created under my home directory. It's called VRR. And I click open here and finish. Then, oh, sorry, I think I clicked finish too quickly. And I'll go here again. Connection details. Okay. It looks like I did it already. Just closed it. I this uh, mapped. So next thing I'm gonna go is basically explaining the virtual network. So I could create, um, you know, two uh, virtual networks here, like bridges, Linux bridge. You can use CLI or use this tool here to create a new bridge. I already have a bridge created. You know, it's called a management bridge, which is connected to the ETH one, which of of this box. And uh, I have, you know, so that's for the management. And I could create a uh, another bridge called your ext here. Okay. Uh, I don't need a network here. You know what? Let me try that. Add network. Hopefully it's not in use. Let me give it a try. Let's keep it isolated for now. Okay. And so that is created. And I'm gonna I have management network for the management traffic, okay? That already I could create it here if I wanted to map physical interface on my box, I could just create a bridge with the physical interface here, okay? Which I'm not gonna do right now. This is connect my network. Once I have this network created, I'm just gonna close this screen here and I'm gonna go new virtual machine. And I'm gonna use import existing disk image. Click forward. I'm gonna give it a path. And I'm gonna map my Junos image as the first image here. And then yeah, let's give it generate hard, I think. Forward. I'm gonna go okay, let's try. Right, and one CPU is fine. I'm gonna give it a name VR1, and I'm gonna click Customize Configuration before install. And network selection, I have management bridge selected by default. Finish, and now it'll let me customize. And what I'm gonna be doing first is I'm gonna add the second hard drive with the metadata, okay? Add hardware, and then I'm gonna choose storage, select or create a custom storage, and click on manage, go back to my directory, choose the metadata image, okay, finish. And then I need to add one more network card. And first I need to change the network uh, card. I'm gonna change it to E1000. And then Okay, let me click finish here. Click on add hardware, network adapter again. This time I'm gonna map it to the VRR E1EXT. And I'm gonna choose E1000. Finish. And everything else, I think I can keep it as it is. Okay. Can begin installation. Now it's gonna go through the boot process, and then I'm gonna go to the basically the serial console to see the boot process. As it says, you start booting Junos. So I'm gonna pause this video while it boots, and I'm gonna come back again, and then configure it. Okay, so looks like my VRR VM is booted up. So I'm just gonna log in. And it's the default root login. I'm go to configuration mode and I'm gonna first uh, set a host name. And then account. Okay. 
Yes, it's still. Okay, so that is there. Then set interface em0 zero, zero family island. Same routing options. Sorry, static route. The default route. Top. Okay. And set interfaces EM one and zero. Let's choose same thing. Okay, so I committed it. Let me see if I can ping. Yeah, I can ping the uh, host. Sorry, 100. Let me double check. One, not it one, sorry. I have config. So sorry, hundred. Okay, so I chose the wrong network, so I'm just gonna go configure mode and replace pattern. What's the state ten? Eight hundred. So you just learn one more command if you're not familiar with it. Let me see if I can ping it. Hundred one. Yeah, I can ping it. So that means I have both EM zero and EM one. This is basically able to communicate. So those are the interfaces. So interfaces, ters match and you see that i have em0 and em1 both are basically communicating outside of this vm that's about it and you can add more interface as you need it so uh, i hope this video helps if you want to install it through cli there are some documentation the juniper networks documentation site for the uh, vrr and you can also try that way i just want to show you a virtual machine manager way which is not uh, explaining the documentation so Hope this helps for someone who is new with the KVM and you can just use the GUI if you want. Okay, thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program the ultimate demonstration of your competence and the training community from forums to social media join the discussion